Tonight, our memo is about why MPs should not fix their own salaries and perks. There is no way employees can determine what they should be paid as salaries and allowances. That is the sole responsibility of the employer. However, to ensure that there is fairness in remuneration, there are agencies and special guidelines to make the salaries reasonable. The workers also have a constitutional right to belong to trade unions which negotiate terms with employers to help create industrial harmony. This same principle should also apply to lawmakers in the National Assembly and the Senate. It would be grossly unfair for these representatives of the people to fix their own pay. Well, sadly, this was the case until the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, SRC, came into being. The role of this specialised agency is to determine the emoluments of the employees of the government and its agencies. But the SRC has come under fire from the lawmakers who want to be allowed to determine their own salaries and allowances. The MPs are opposed to a proposed law by the government to block them from fixing their own salaries and determining other benefits, loans and grants. Now, if passed, this legislation will also bar MPs from direct involvement in the National Government Constituency Development Fund and the National Government Affirmative Action Fund. Since the advent of the Constituency Fund, MPs have been pivotal in decision-making, sometimes at the expense of their major responsibility, which is making laws. The Conflict of Interest Bill 2023 is now before Parliament. Speaker Moses Watangula has had to delay its passage after Rarieda MP Otiende Amolo questioned its constitutionality and alleged that it proposes to give the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission excessive powers. He also argues that the bill unfairly focuses on MPs and MCAs instead of applying to all public officers. The MPs, who include seasoned lawyers, should thrash out any anomalies and ensure that if passed, the new law will be sound and will serve the intended purpose. While MPs, as leaders, should be involved in the running of these vital government funds, they should not be allowed to hijack them for their own personal benefit. There is a need to eliminate influence peddling and corruption. That is the memo. Bungled project or budgeted corruption? Treasury on the spot over a multi-billion shilling non-existent data recovery centre that carts away 600 million shillings every year. Also tonight... <laughs> River Enzu tragedy two years on. Another tragedy in waiting with the government's promise to construct a bridge, remaining just that, a promise. Plus... Calm down. And now let, let's, let's see action from the field officers. Let's see action from the security officers. Another bandit attack. More injured, restless locals. Leaders want the government to walk the talk and fight insecurity. And... Tortured after circumcision. 15-year-old boy admitted to hospital after ritual meant to harden him goes wrong. Live from Nation Center. This is NTV Tonight with Smriti Viryati. Thanks for joining us. Flora Atieno is our sign language interpreter. To our top story, in the death due to flooding in the country has risen to 148 
after six more people lost their lives. The deaths were reported in Lamu, Taita Taveta and Migori counties. The government has dispersed 451 million shillings in cash transfers to help families affected by floods in eight counties. NTV's Sydney Chazima has more. As the El Nino rains continue pounding parts of the country, more cases of deaths and destruction of homesteads and property are being reported. Six more people are reported to have lost their lives in Migori, Lamu and Taita Taveta counties. In Voi, dozens were displaced after a night of heavy downpour. Sasaba, Voi lanza kunyesha, tukarudu, tukalala, kulala, tukakakaka kidogo kuja kushtuka hivi, maji tayari ya shafika kwa kitanda. Kushikusha mbu hivi, maji tayari ya kwa hapo kwa mbu. Hapo ndio kidogo, kijaribu kimbizana ni mshia watu na waleze kwa mba kuna maja mekuja kwa sababu we wenga lukua bado wako kwa usingizi. Na wakija kwa mbu kwa manyumba wamejipata ni tayari vitanda vimeanza kuluwa maji. Sisi hapa tumeathirika tena vibaya sana, sana tena sana. Hivi watoto wetu wengine tumekelea juu ya makabati. Maana ndani hakukaliki, hakuingiliki. The national government maintains that it is doing all it can to come to the aid of those affected. Deputy President Rigave Gashagwa, while on an assessment tour of the flooding Garissa and Tana River counties, says that money has been released to help seven Asal counties. The 1 billion shillings that we have given is for emergency intervention to restore the roads to ensure that supplies are able to get to where people are. Sections of roads and bridges in the counties of Lamu, Tana River and Garissa have been swept away by floods. Gashagwa says that interventions are in place to repair the roads starting early next year. I will be convening a meeting for our development partners who are involved in road programs in Northern Kenya with the ministry officials so that we can start planning in good time the path of reconstruction of our roads. The deputy president, joined by local leaders in Garissa and Tana River, distributed food, medicine, non-food items and money to the affected, while urging county governments to set aside more funds to help alleviate the suffering of Kenyans affected by floods. Vile serekali kuu inafanya, tunasimamisha miladi ya maendeleo, kwanza tulise wananchi. Tulekebishe barabara, tununue madawa, ata serikali za county tunaomba njini kwa heshima. Munaweza simamisha mambo zingine zote, zile peza ziko mweke kwa mambo ya kusaidia wananchi wakati wa shida. Garissa eh, Township is not a pastoral community, it's a farming community. And our county or some county of Garissa, the farming activity that used to take place here, is also completely destroyed. That means the livelihood of the people of Garissa Township is also completely affected. According to the Ministry of Interior, 89,098 people have since been displaced by floods. Several others have been rescued from drowning and received medical attention from rescue centers erected in several parts of the country. Sydney Chazima, NTV. Now tonight, Treasury is on the spotlight over a multi-billion shilling non-existent data recovery center, which has turned out to be one of the National Treasury's largest pending bills. 5.17 billion shillings owed to Missort Africa, which won a tender to build the center in Naivasha. But the money owed to the company is not money used for establishing and equipping the data recovery centre, but an award by the court after the National Treasury breached the contract it had with the firm. And as our senior political reporter Melita Olatengis reports, the award accrues a 12% interest per annum. That's about 600 million shillings. The ballooning cost of the National Data Recovery Center, which now lies idle in Naivasha, is damning. Resort Africa, the company which won the tender, has gotten more than it bargained for, from the initial 800 million to now 5.1 billion shillings. In a botched deal that brings into sharp focus government blunders in implementing public projects, costing the taxpayer billions of shillings. Delaying of this decisions uh, uh, is actually costing us a lot of money. And, and maybe one of the things 
that maybe what to do is find out you know uh, how much money we are losing on december 13th 2009 Mizot africa limited entered into a contract with the treasury for the construction of an alternative data recovery center in naivasha at an estimated cost of 782 million shillings the contract would involve Mizot procuring electrical equipment for the center the project was supposed to be implemented in three phases, but the government moved to deny Mizot the contract for the third phase. The disagreement between the two parties went before a sole arbitrator, one Karaoke Muigwa, who found the treasury at fault and asked it to pay Mizot 3.8 billion shillings. The arbitrator's ruling was upheld by the court on December 21st. Misot was also to be paid 164 million for the farm's equipment staying idle at the site and another 25 million which was retained by Treasury on the project. In a second case, Misot was in October last year awarded a total sum of 235 million shillings together with interest after the Treasury failed to pay the full contract amount for the supply of maintenance spares for air conditioning units at Herufi Data Center. The total arbitration award now stands at 5.17 billion shillings, 12% interest per annum, that is 612 million shillings per year, and 1.7 million shillings interest in a day. The award is seven times more than the initial tender, 782 million. If this court case was handled on time, I'm sure, uh, national treasury government at valid uh, reasons to object and allow even arbitration. Arbitration would have reduced the cost of this. Despite the ridiculous figures, the data center is yet to start operations with reports of vandalism of machines installed to the tune of 100 million shillings. According to the Ministry of ICT, an additional 3.5 billion shillings would be required to complete the project. Uh, it's very risky for us to have not to have a data recovery center because it would mean that in the event of the collapse of any of the data centers in Konza or, 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 or the other one is in GDC. And, and GDC, that means there was no, no recovery. There is no digital footprint on Mizot Company, a majority which is owned by one Martin Nanga Kanyenge and registered in 2004. The interest on the tender raises eyebrows on whether there is more than meets the eye. Melita Oletenges, NTV. Now five people lost their lives and four others were injured after, the, uh, after they were run over by a trailer in Kikope along the Nairobi-Nakuru Highway on Sunday night. The 10 p.m. incident all in one of the shops. Na zilikuwa zote ndani hapo kwa garage. Zilitoa ndani kwa garage na zikasukumu na hiyo gari zote mpaka nje. Na mm -hmm. mimi zina kwa siku labda nilikuwa natengeneza kutoka 5,000, natengemea na kazi vingi na ilikuwa inapatikana lakini sasa sina wa kitu na pata saa hii. Sababu garage imekwisha, garage imekwisha. Sasa niko namna hiyo. Kuweko saa hii ni bodi kwa barabara. Na hizo saa hii ni bodi hakuna hata saa hii. Kuko na bump ile na dio kubwa pale. Gari ikikuja ikielekea pade hii inakuja kama bia kujua kama kuna bump juu hakuna hata zile dogo simeisha sasa vile hizi tunaomba zile bump na sign board serikali tusaidie uh, definitely kari ikiteremka kwa hiyo mteremko ya kutoka sehemu inaitwa choma chomason ama kianuku mpaka kikopei ni mteremka ambaye ni kali sana Na lasi makari ilikuwa imekimbia kutoka hapo. Now, two years ago today, 32 people lost their lives after a bus plunged into the flooded river Enzio in Kitui County. The government then promised to construct a bridge linking Nguni and Nu in Kitui County. Well, 24 months later, construction of the bridge is yet to be completed. Since the rain started early last month, scenes at the bridge are reminiscent of those in 2021, when the tragedy happened, with motorists, passengers and those on foot taking the risk of trying to cross the flooded river. Our reporter Margaret Kimathi covered the tragedy while well, she returned to the site and now reports on the tragedy in waiting at the Killer Bridge.
Whenever it rains, traveling from Mwingi to Nu, a journey of 75 kilometers in Kitui County, is always a nightmare for locals, and reaching their destination safely is never guaranteed. Hardly a year passes without lives being lost in this seasonal river that flows from the Momoni Hills and cuts through Mwingi North and Mwingi Central constituencies before joining River Tana. River Inzio has occasionally hit the headlines for claiming the lives of locals as they try to cross the river. I'm standing at Enzio River in Nguni where a 51-seater bus ferrying a Catholic church choir from Wingi to Nu plunged into this river, killing 32 people. Two years later, the bridge that was promised by the government is yet to be completed and the river is flooded. We arrive at the incomplete River Enzio Bridge on an early morning, hoping to cross over to Nu. But just like other travelers stranded by the riverbank, all we could was watch the flooded river, waiting for the flood water to subside. This has been the case in the past few weeks as passengers, students, exam officials, police and medical officers are stranded on each side of the river. Queen Mualeli, a trader from Nguni, is among those stranded. She has been here for four hours, waiting to cross over to New Center to sell her farm produce. Kwa leo, tukona shita, tulikuwa ndataka tufuke kwenda nu, lakini saa hii, nito imefurika, na tuna mali pengine pakotoa pesa ya kujisaitia. Kwa hipo, tunaona, tukona shita kwa hii mtuo enziu, inatusumbua sana. Kwanda sokoni ni shita na hapo ndiyo tunatua kitusa kusaidia watozo, watoto kusomesha. Mwaleli says she makes 12,000 shillings on market days. If she does not make it to cross the river, she will go back home with little or no money at all. Tulikuwa rumenua piasi, kitungu na nyanya na sahi kikosa kufuka soko yote itaosa. Na ikiosa hiyo ni asara. Na hakuna matumini ya kufuka. Kisipekua ni daraja ijatengenezwa, tungekua tumevuka. Tona, sato nalia zarekali, hii daraja yafanya nini? Kitengenezwa, tutupate means of transport mzuri. Tona, gata zote naeza kufuka vizuri, kutupelagia mzigo. Kama zini mepagia mzigo ya wenyewe, ni ya kukopa, ni ya madeni. This is not an isolated case. Motuwa Kasioki, a boda boda operator from New Center, has been forced to camp in Nguni for three days. Motuwa delivered farm produce to Nguni Center, but the flooded river in Zio has held him back from returning to his town. Mimi ni mepoteza pesa mingi, hata tuseme kama elfu tatu hivi, kila ziku nafaa kufanya kama elfu moja hivi, nikiwa na beba bandea kwetu, na saa hii, sina kitu. Shamaana zana ni watu aragisha hii ndaranja, ikuwe sawa. Juu kazi, tuzilalishie kazi. Juu tunangaika sana. Sasa ukiangalia mama wazito kama mimi, kuenda osi kujifungua, inakuwa tu nishinda mingi sana. Manake ngari aziezi pita. So, mimi kama mama, ninaomba sana silikali tusaidie. This situation here has created job opportunities for some who are taking a risk of helping residents and vehicles cross over to the other side of the river. James Nyerere is one of them. His job begins as early as there are motorists or pedestrians on either sides of the river who needs to cross. Kama unaona pale wale vijana wanasaidia watu kufuka na beba kama ni motorbike na tunapata ile maji ni mingi zaidi tunabeba juu ili e, ile mota isiweze kunywa maji ivuke hiyo side na mtu akuwe na safari nzuri pia tuna tunasaidia kama kwa mfano tumpata mama mjamzito yule tunamfukisha kwa haraka anaenda hospitali kazi iko hapa ni ya kufukisha watu kwa maji waende ngune na kufukisha warudi hakuna kazi ya mota bike inaendelea tuseme hamsini ukibeba mgongo na lipwa mia Ugifukisha mota baiki unalipwa miambili. Nyerere was one of the local divers 
who helped rescue 16 survivors in the 2021 accident that claimed 32 lives. He says the county government of Kitui, under the then leadership of Charity Ngilu, gave them empty promises on employment. Governor alikuwa mesema ata tuchukua, atuende, atufanyi training, then atuweke kwa emergency team, ili tukue mpata kazi. Tulingoja hiyo ahadi haikutimia. Tungeweza kuuliza yule ambaye ni gavana wa saa hii, ambaye ni gavana Julius Malombe. Kama inawezekana, eh, aweze eh, kuangalia hilo jambo, kuna vijana ambao wako hapa ambao wako na uwezo wa 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 wa, wa, wa kukabiliana na, na janga kama ya maji We've been here for three days trying to cross over to the other side, which is no, uh, to conduct an interview with one of the family that lost 11 family members on an uh, NZO accident in 2021. I can also see the residents are also stranded here and uh, the cars are all over because they cannot be able to cross over to the other side. And I'm just going to speak to one of the residents here. Pengine tuambie jina lako alafu tuambie umataka kuvuka ile upande mwingine kufanya nini? Mimi naitwa Joseph Mbila. Eh, mimi ni mubiasara wa hii masoko na tumekuwa tukisumbuliwa na hii muto kutoka hii muto kutoka muda mrefu tangu 2021 tulikuwa hapa basi ikaingia ikaua watu alafu sasa hii ya leo imetuvungia hapa tumekuja na magari tumerudi sasa sisi tunaomba serikali kama venye naweza tuzie timalizie kuweka hii daraja tuwe tunafuka tunaenda tunaendelea biashara zetu tunazisaidia na tunasaidia jamii zetu Tumeteseka sana muda mrefu sababu ya hii mto. Mwenyeambia kwamba ulikuwa unaenda sokoni. Pengine zile bidhaa ambazo umenunua zitaharibika na pengine utaenda hasara ya pesa ngapi? Sikipato hapa na mvua sitaharibika na nitakuwa nimeenda hasara ya saidi ya 100 kwa maana mizigo yenye niko nayo iwezani na maji. Na hata wengineo wetu wako na vitu vingine zinaweza haribika kama matomato, wengine wanauza mikate inanyeshewa hapa, wengine wanauza manguo inaharibikia hapa. Kwa hivyo tunaendelea kuingia hasara. Tuko na asara mingi sana ile tunaingia tukiwa hapa. To survivors of the NZO tragedy, the Nunguni route evokes memories of their near-death experience. Lenox Chibindo was to take photographs during the wedding of Mr. and Mrs. David Mutuambuvi on December 4th, 2021. He was lucky he survived. Chibindo says those in the bus, which was ferrying a choir and several other people for a wedding, waited for two hours for water to subside until they were convinced it was safe to cross over after several vehicles crossed the flooded river successfully. The driver was hesitant to drive across. He only bowed to pressure from passengers. Kisha badeo katokezia tena tinga upande ule mungine tena wanu ikavuka. Wakasema, ah, basi kwa nini ndereva anatuchelewesha. Na tutachelewa na harusi na sisi ndio tuko na keki. Na vitu vingine vya harusi. Hivyo basi, ikabidi ya kwamba watu wakambio waingie kwa gari. Hata sisi tuvuke juu basi ni kubwa hata kuliko gari ambazo zimevuka. The moment that followed were all a blur. Muda wa dakika moja gari ilikuwa tayari imesha anguka ndani na ikaanza kuzama ndani. Na hata baadae haiku maliza dakika mbili yo gari ilikuwa huwezu kayona iko wapi. Sasa ilikuwa ni kila mtu kupigania maisha yake jinsi ambavyo angeweza kutoka mahali pale. Maji sayo ya meanza kuingia kutoka kila sehemu na mimi nikaona akili kaniambia sasa ni kungangana uweze kupitia kwa drisha. Kwa hivyo nikangangana na kiocha cha ile bus nika kigonga ya mara ya kwanza kikakata kigonga mara ya pili kikakata mara ya tatu ndio kikafunguka na nikaweza kupenya pale nikaanguka ndani ya, ya ule mto. He lost studio items including two cameras and printer worth 150,000 shillings and life has not been easy. Nimefika miaka miwili lakini ilikuwa ni shida kidogo maana kwenda kutafuta hivyo vitu ilikuwa ni shida maana kamera yenyewe Wakati ule ikiwa ni mwezi wa kuminambili, kamera zilikuwa zimepandishwa bei na Nairobi zaidi. Ikawa kupata kamera nyingine ilikuwa ni shida.
Right, that feature by Margaret Kimathi continues after this break. You can share your thoughts using the hashtag lies under the bridge. Do stay with us. Si Christmas ndio hii. Wengi wanaangazia loto moto. Yetu ni charity mashinani. Jumuika nasi msimu huu wa Christmas kuahimarisha na kuwafurahisha wasiojiweza. Tuwape lisho, tuwape makazi, tuwape tabasamu kupitia star 570 hash. Zawadi za Christi ni kemkem zinashinaniwa ikiwa the grand prize ni jijenge na moti. Jipe gari ya gharama yako, mafuta ya gharama yako na suluhisho ya hasoli yako. 25% ya mchezo huu inatengewa charity. Jijenge na moti, iwashe, iwake! Lucky Game, imedhaminiwa na eBet Kenya Limited. My skin is my identity, my strength. It's unique and deserves care made specially for me. New Nivea Radiant and Beauty Advanced Care with five oils and five vitamins, 48-hour nourishment. Helps reduce appearance of stretch marks in just two weeks. New Nivea Radiant and Beauty Advanced Care for your shade of beautiful. Hi there, my name is George Washiri, CEO of the Group, and I'm very excited to introduce uh, Ushidi Gardens Nakuru. This property is developed by Optiven and we are doing compacted maramulos. We plant the trees, uh, fence the property. What's unique about this property? It's only 1.2 kilometers off the highway and 18 minutes from Nakuru City, the pink city. So please call this number 0790 Optiven, we have you covered. Another survivor is Stephen Kerr, the chairman of St. Cecilia Choir that lost 16 choir members. Memories of that day are vivid. When they go to the river, they found it flooded with huge crowds on both sides. It was a market day at the busy new market. With vehicles parked on the riverbanks, the choir members alighted and engaged in what they knew best song and dance as they waited for waters to recede and be known to them danger was lacking personally mimi sikuwa nimejifunika belt so nilipitia kwa dirisha and i naweza sema ni mungu alisaidia kwa sababu hiyo dirisha hata sikuona iko sikujua iko wapi nili i was just roaming in the bus na nikashika dirisha Na hivyo ndipo niliweza kupenya kwa dirisha na nikadipata juu ya bus. Kea says the accident hit him when the first victim was rescued and even after resuscitation could not breathe anymore. The second to be rescued was his best friend. He too was lifeless. Aikuwa, aikuwa kitu raisi kwetu. The, the loss of every member there. Because I remember... We lost the leadership of the choir, almost the whole of the leadership. Actually, when I was a treasure, by then I was not an official. Kia says it pays to see a bridge that claimed that two lives is yet to be completed two years later. The compensation they were promised as well, they are yet to receive. Hatukuweza kupata msaada wa wote, mpaka asa ilibaki tukuwa ni ahadi, Mara county itaweza kusaidia watu, mara sijui national, uh, sijui nini itasaidia watu, lakini mpaka leo hii hatuja wahi pata msaada wote kutoka kwa serikali, wala county government, wala mahali popote mpaka leo hii. There is no justice, eh? both to the families who lost their, 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 their members, 
and the community at large kwa sababu ukiangalia hiyo daranja mali iko ni iko katika njia muhimu sana sasa hii with this economy yenye ngumu hivyo watu pia hawezi enda fanya biashara kwa sababu hiyo ni njia watu wanaenda kufanya biashara Bonfes Mosili lost his wife of 20 years. He has been raising three children, two boys and a girl, the youngest in grade 3. Bibi yangu ni bibi alikuwa wa kipekee. Na kuzema kweli nasikia watu tu wakiniambia ni wao lakini kivikiria nikigea kutoka moyoni sio rahisi kupata bibi kama huyo. Kwa sababu yeye alikuwa transparent alikuwa open na wakati wa shida alikuwa kila wakati ananiunga mkono yeye alikuwa da biashara yake najua kuna wengine wanakuwa da biashara lakini wakati ule mzee amelemewa unakuta aweza kumwambia kama ana kitu mama alikuwa open Musili and his wife prayed together on that fateful day before she left to join the team that was attending a wedding in Nu Likuwa tu kunanyesha kama hizi tuliamuka asukui, tukaenda kulima. Pada kulima tukamba, tukachana, tulikuwa tukutana. Mi ni kaenda hospitali ya kaenda. Saya ni kiuwa hospitali lipolipikuwa ya simu ni kaulizwa. Na one of my friend from Kutani, kunangari mengia kwa mtu wana ijua. Nika mambia wazia kuijua hata bibi yangu wa kundani. Na sisi tukailekea mtu wani. Kuenda tu, tulikuta ya kwamba kuna baadhi ya wale wali okolewa. Na kuna baadhi ya wale wali ingia hawakuweza kuokoka kutoka kwa mdo na bibi yangu alikuwa mmoja wao Musili says life has not been easy for him and his children since then Nyewe ni jambo ngumu mpaka wa sasa kwa sababu ni maisha ngumu kuka na especially kuka bila una mwanzako hakuwa mgonjwa Akuwa, alikuwa tumepanga, kila kitu kilikuwa kipepangwa, tukutane sahi, project silikuwa, lakini hiyo ikafanyika na ikawa hifo mpaka wa sasa. At Good Shepherd Catholic Church in Mwingi, a grotto was built in memory of 16 St. Cecilia choir members who perished. Following the accident, the church held formal counseling sessions for the remaining choir members. The first Sunday is Kulikuanga Kubaya because uh, these images are when they too. When you walk, you are Melazo Kando Yamuto, become a potato. Why? The Likua too, Kwa Kil is a wing. Kot Nakuja Kanisani, Ama sometimes what to Kija choir, when Akuja and Anza Kulia, but I like Quimba. Na took what Najua to Ansia Wapi, Kosababu Wengi, while you come a potato Maisha. So atukua ya tunajua kama tutapata tuta wengine, hiyo kwa itarudi kuwa hile ilikuwepo ama imefikia kikomo. Lakini mungu wali tusaidia. The construction of bridge that claimed lives began in January 2022 and was expected to be completed by December 2022, but is yet to be fully constructed. One year since the completion deadline lapsed and the bridge is only 40% complete, workers say the project is dragging due to challenges in funding and workers have not been paid for five months. The contractor Q Construction is blaming the government for the slow pace of the project. Shida enye iko ni kwa malipo. Uh, contractor wetu malipo wanatulipa kwa hali ambayo si mzuri uh, na hali ya huku ni ngumu jua kali gharama ya maisha pia iko juu kila kitu huku inahitaji pesa According to Kenya Rural Roads Authority they have completed the main critical work of the foundation and that the steel girders required for the completion are being fabricated Kenya further noted that the bridge will be completed by June 2024 On December 7, 2021, two days after the bus tragedy, a government delegation led by the then Infrastructure and Public Works Principal Secretary Mwangi Maringa visited the Enzio Bridge and announced plans to construct a bridge, pumping half a million shillings into the project. 
Promises were made by various government officials to follow up on the project. A week later, the PS told Parliament that his ministry had secured funds for the overhead bridge, whose construction started in January 2022. In 2019, the same PS had visited the bridge after five people traveling in a Toyota Pro Box drowned. He promised that the bridge would be built in one year, but nothing was done. But we're in agreement, we don't have two years to wait. Eh? We're not going to lose any more lives in here. So um, uh, the DG for Kera will be driving a team that intends to deliver this bridge in 10 months or less. Na hapa tunatangaza, akota mtu atakuja ma, atakufa maji tena enziu. Na hii ni mawambia contractor, hii daraja itakuwa tofauti na zile zingine mejengu. Hapa tutaandika majina ya hawa ndugu zetu na walikufa maji hapa majina yao. Hata wale wana mbao walikufa. Nataka hii daraja hata iwekwe usiku iwe matai na mulikwa. Unanilo? It will be a memorial and zeal memorial bridge. No village is only accessible through River Enziu, a seasonal river that pours into River Tana. While the history behind the naming of River Enziu is unknown, Enziu in Kamba means black. The residents now know the river as the river of darkness, a river that has claimed lives and which without a bridge remains a disaster in waiting. Margaret Kimathi and TV. A painful reminder of the harsh reality lies under the bridge by NTV's Margaret Kimathi. Well, some feedback here on X. Ken Aseka, you say, what a heartless bunch of leaders we have. They've perfected lip service and dancing on the graves of the poor electorate. Even after 32 people died at River Enzu two years ago, the bridge remains incomplete. What are our priorities really? And then we have some more feedback. Um, one Johi Mkulima, you say, River Nzu Bridge is a must and not a favor to Nguni and new citizens in Kitui. Consider finishing the bridge as promised. All right, it is a story that we will follow, whether or not that bridge will indeed be built or not. It is uh, a few minutes past half past the hour. We've got to take a breather, but Nina Shaban is up next with the day's business news. Stay with us. CBA. Go for it. One Expats presents the new 1000% Hyper Bonus. 
take part in. Place your accumulators with one expense and boost your winnings by up to 1000%. Hyper bonus, better than bonus. HBC, Wale Wajanja, Waterfield Home, na DSTV Street. Get your HD decoder at 3,499 shillings and get one month of DSTV family for free. I feel home, na Sarah. Amen. I mean, Zari. Sarah Hassan. To stream the best entertainment anytime, anywhere, download DSTV Stream now. I feel home, HBC. NTV Business News, in association with Standard Chartered Bank. A very good evening to you. I do trust that your night has been kind to you. It's time to take a look at the business news. And my name is Nina Shaban. Now we start off with the courts have issued conservatory orders temporarily halting the planned privatization of 11 parastatals. The conservatory order suspends implementation of Section 21, Subsection 1 of the Privatization Act 2023 and any decisions made pursuant to that section until the 6th of February 2024. The matter came up for direction before Justice Chacha Mwita and the court was satisfied that the petition raised substantial constitutional and legal issues of public importance. State-owned companies that were earmarked for privatization include East African Portland Cement Company, Kenyatana International um, Convention Center and National Oil Corporation. The Kenya Revenue Authority has escalated its fight with lawyers insisting that some law firms underdeclared their income, denying the state revenue. The feud began when the Kerry sought to collect taxes on interest and on money held in client accounts, which law firms manage to trust. The taxman maintains that some law firms have been reducing tax liabilities and in the process wholly evading taxes. The lawyers through the Law Society of Kenya in that the authority is on a fishing expedition and is wrongfully going after their members. The government, which has an economic program with the International Monetary Fund, is under pressure to reduce the country's debt vulnerabilities and achieve the requisite debt to gross domestic product ratio of 55% by 2029. Professional searches, lawyers and high net worth individuals are some of the taxpayers that the National Treasury noted have not been paying their fair share of taxes. And in other news, more than 2,000 tea pickers who have sued agricultural firm James Finlay, uh, Kenya, over alleged poor working conditions have suffered a blow after a judge ruled that the decisions made by foreign courts that are not in line with the constitution cannot be enforced in Kenya. Employment and Labor Relations Court further stopped a non-governmental organization that has filed cases on behalf of former and current tea pickers to stop forthwith from instituting cases in Scotland. The court decision made on November 30th, 2023, came a few days after James Finlay's tea business was acquired by Brown Investments PLC. The tea pickers have filed a number of cases in Scotland against the multinational seeking compensation for injuries suffered and for poor working conditions. The court directed Justice and Environment Foundation and Kenyan lawyer based in the UK, that's Mr. Ronald Onyango, to cease participating in the prosecution of the Scottish proceedings until they have complied with the mandatory constitutional and statutory provisions applicable in advancing the cases in Scotland.
The Kenya Electricity Generating Company, Kenjan, has allowed utility firm Kenya Power to pay back a part of its foreign currency denominator debts in Kenyan shillings. Kenjan is in talks with Kenya Power over settling debts owed by the utility firm with an aim of having Kenya Power settle part of the debt which ought to be repaid in dollars in local currency. The electricity generator say that it arrived at the decision considering the challenge of of accessing dollars in the market currently. Kenjan has been in talks with Kenya Power, which have so far resulted in full settlement of the old debt and um, that the utility farm now only remains with current debts. Records from the two companies by the end of last year show that Kenya Power owed Kenjin upwards of 23 billion shillings and Kenya Power booked a 3.2 billion net loss in the financial year ended June 2023. Thousands of shoppers streamed into the University of Nairobi's graduation square for this year's Nation Shopping Festival, a shopping event that brought together 500 service providers, exhibitors and traders. At the ring of the Monday trading bell, shoppers had the opportunity to take advantage of the unbeatable shopping offers and sales as the festive season nears. Monday was themed around consumable house goods and foodstuff. Different days will be them around among other things tech and electronics clothing and apparel machinery and finance don't miss out on the shopping festival before its climax on saturday And that's it for our business news tonight. My name is Nina Shivan. After the break, Smriths will be back with more news. NTV Business News, in association with Standard Chartered Bank. A bank that connects potential to possibilities. So, where will you go from here? One Expert presents the new 1000% Hyper Bonus. Take part in. Place your accumulators with One Expert and boost your winnings by up to 1000%. Hyper Bonus, better than bonus. Janini, Simu Christmasi, Kwenya Star 570 hash, Kuna Zawari, Kem Kem, Napesa Kibao, Ho Ho Ho! Wako Pia, Ikiwa the Grand Prize, Michi Jangena Moti! Tuna Kupatia, Dari Yagaramayako, Comfort, Check, Glass, Check, Maputa, Kitobo, Iwasha Iwake! Lights Pia na Driving School, Zimegaramiwa. Buzi pia ziko kibao. <laughs> Kila 100 bubu na ucheza nao kwenye lucky game ina kupa one entry point. Ya kujishindia one of these motifs. The more you play, the more you increase your chances za kujishindia. Big receipt za what is isi kupite. Jijenge na moti. Na star 570 hash and la 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 la. Lucky game. Ime the miniwa na eBet Kenya Limited. You do your best out there, let us do our best in here with the disinfecting power of Jake. Because Jake cleans and kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing germs and COVID-19 in your home. Jake, your family's guardian against germs and COVID-19. Hi there, my name is Joshua Shuri, CEO of Optiden Group, and I'm very excited to introduce Ushidi Gardens Nakuru. This property is developed by Optiven, and we are doing compact and maram roads. We plant the trees, fence the property. What's unique about this property? It's only 1.2 kilometers off the highway and 18 minutes from Nakuru City, the pink city. So please call this number 0790 Optiven, we have you covered. Optiven.
Thanks for staying with us. Three people believed to have been involved in the torture of a 15-year-old boy who was in seclusion after being circumcised will remain in police custody for seven more days to allow police conclude their investigations. The boy, who's expected to join Form 1 next year, was allegedly physically abused by his brother and his mother's boyfriend for nearly three days. NTV's Ruth Samway reports. What was expected to be a normal rite of passage into adulthood for this 15-year-old boy turned out to be one of his most harrowing experiences. It all began three days after he had been put in isolation. The ones behind the heinous unfortunate acts were those expected to offer him care, his brother and his mother's boyfriend. All this happened in a room next to his mother's house. Among the people who took the boy to the hospital, the mother was there. She wanted to just to be exonerated, uh, but uh, one thing was mentioned is what now is she was not yesterday. The assault ended when he was dragged onto the road, beaten until he collapsed. He was rescued by police and taken to hospital nursing serious wounds in different parts of his body. We have been managing him of pain and antibiotics for the infection because he had severe infection. Currently we are planning to go to to theater to do some debridement like moving all the infective tissues. So the main wound of circumcision is very septic. So that's the main infection site. The three suspects, his mother, his brother and his mother's boyfriend were arrested on Sunday afternoon and taken to the Naivasha court on Monday. They are currently being held at the Maimahiu police station. <laughs> And people better take advantage of the church or the council of elders. They are doing it. They are doing it in a group. Ruth Sarmoy and TV. Absolutely difficult story. Um, may that boy get well soon and may justice be served. All right, we've got to take a break. I'll be back with the day's sports news in a moment. Big Kenya, we believe in your financial potential and we are here to help you reach new heights. Enjoy an attractive interest rate of up to 14% per annum on your savings. Make the most of this exclusive offer today and let your money thrive. For more details, call us today or visit a branch near you. Stanbic Bank. any results. Nivea Luna 630 works from day one. With visible results in just two weeks, you'll see the difference or get your money back. The results speak for themselves. Join the one million women already using the number one Lumina 630 from Nivea. Kenya Twendembele NCBA Go for it.
Welcome to the Nation Shopping Festival, the biggest soccer sale in town, featuring 500 vendors ready to bring you the best deals and products. Discover everything you need under one roof, including a dedicated kids' playing area and a tempting food court with mouth-watering delicacies. Visit www.nationshoppingfestival.com for more information and join us at the University of Nairobi grounds from 4th to 9th December. Make this holiday season extra special with the Nation Shopping Festival. Time for the sports news. I'm stepping in for Bernard Ndong, who joins us later after this broadcast for Sport On. Now, Kevin Imo scored a game high of 10 goals as Gideon Kiprotich followed him closely with nine goals to inspire the Kenya Defence Forces handball team to kickstart their East and Central Africa Handball Club Championship with victory at the Nyayo National Stadium outdoor court. A KDF beat UPDF 45 to 43 in a pulsating encounter in front of a charged up crowd that cheered the home team relentlessly. At half time, KDF were trailing 20 to 18, but change in tactics by coach Yusuf Kipkoech inspired the soldiers to put up a spirited fight to ensure the win. In the other three games played earlier, GSU beat Prisons in an all-Kenyan affair, winning 29 to 28. Rwanda Police narrowly beat Equity Bank 29 to 28, as JKT of Tanzania were steamrolled by NCPB of Kenya, 40 to 25 in the women's category. We're going to uh, sit and, and see how we're going to counter the second game. Yeah, teamwork will make us win the game. Uh, tumeona upande wa, wa first break tunaremewa kidogo tukipoteza mpira wanakimbia wanatufunga kwa uraisi so tukirudi mazoezi tutajaribu tulikave hiyo kidogo tuone namna tutaweza kukaunta watu ambao wanaenda first break kwa sana The Cabinet Secretary for Sports, Ababu Namwamba, has rallied the Kenya ladies cricket team to perform at their optimum when they feature at the World Cup qualifiers in Uganda from the 9th to the 19th of December. The team's departure follows their recent successful outing in Botswana, where they bagged the division trophy. Kenya will qualify for the ladies World Cup slated for next year should they finish in the top two from the Africa Zone qualifiers at the Kiambogo Cricket Grounds in Kampala. Among the teams battling for the two slots include the host Uganda, Tanzania, Botswana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Namibia and Rwanda. This country has brushed shoulders with the very best in the game. And so we are not talking about something that has not happened before. Kenya has done really, really well before. And you are now the generation that has the opportunity to get our country back to the high table of cricket. The National Women's 3 on 3 women's basketball team will be back in the country early Tuesday morning after stunning the hosts Egypt 21 to 20 in an entertaining final to be crowned the African uh, champions. Both sides were undefeated on their way to the final, but Egypt enjoyed the advantage for most of the game. Steps away from victory with a 19 to 13 lead, Egypt saw the gold medal slip away as Kenya mounted a comeback. Brings Egypt within one. And the two-point shot from Okrat make it a one-point game. It's Kenya. They have the ball to go to overtime and win it. Wanyama, the ball for the win. KCB ladies outsmarted defending champions Kenya Pipeline women to be crowned the winners of the second edition of the Eldoret City Volleyball Tournament that was held in Eldoret in Wasingishu County. 
The bankers, who had survived a scare from their rivals Post Bank in the semi-finals, salvaged a win by beating their opponents by three sets to one. They booked their spot in the final where they upstaged their arc rivals Kenya Pipeline by three sets to one. Uba. Safari moja mgeni atakapo asili ambaye sio mwingine Second edition was a new chapter in that it took an international outlook we are teams from Uganda we expect we will invite teams from other countries more teams from Rwanda and uh, Tanzania personally i wish that we connect these young people to serious leagues and serious sponsors so that they can be trained and other people can take them up to really you know uh, exploit on that talent Former Paralympian Henry Wanyoike has requested the government to factor facilities for sports persons living with disabilities when building a stadia. Wanyoike said Paralympic sports require specialized equipment and devices which are costly and this jeopardizes the preparations of many sportsmen and women who are disabled. He also urged the government to invest more in Paralympics, stating that it has the potential to earn more medals for the country. We really appreciate from the year 2004, when President Kibaki was in power, the, uh, some few changes uh, has, done, has been done, but I want to encourage the current government to keep supporting us so that we can be able to, have to produce more and more champions like myself. If you can check the, uh, the recent years, we have not been doing so well in the world of uh, sports and Paralympics because uh, we are not able to go to the back, uh, to, the, to, the, to the villages where we can give it up to other talents. It is 10 o'clock and that's where we close this broadcast, but not before giving you a sneak peek into uh, Sport On. Well, uh, in just a moment, you'll see that Ben Dong is not in studio. He is outside there with the city lights glimmering behind him and what looks like a stove or it could be a DJ deck, but I'm pretty sure it's a stove. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure what they've got lined up for you tonight, but it is worth watching and staying tuned. Indeed, they are cooking some sports news for you. All right, stay with us, um, Ben Adong and the team coming up in just a moment with Sport On, but from Flora Atieno, uh, our sign language interpreter, the crew and myself, Smriti Vidyarthi, it is good night. This is NTV. We've got unbeatable shows for the whole neighborhood to choose from. <laughs> I can have my happily ever after. So stay connected to DSTV this holiday season to make the best entertainment yours. DSTV, it's your moment. Mother, tell me the truth. Did you really patch things up with Mrs. Irene? Yes, darling. Because now I understand that the love that you feel for each other is very strong. I promise you that I'm not going to oppose it anymore. How should I know what that is? Don't pretend. Morales brought this to you earlier. You are running DNA tests on someone to see if you have a child. <sighs> I don't want your brother rubbing the fact that you have no interest right into my face. All right, then. I'll do whatever you wish. You better do what I wish. Not just because of that. It's your obligation! Abdul and that woman are getting married. I came from there and she told me. Head over heels.
How do you keep your toilets clean? I use normal detergent and bleach for washing. The detergent and bleach cleanless can leave behind yellowness, rust, and germs. Havix 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. And kills 99.9% .9 illness causing germs in your toilet, including the COVID-19 virus. Next presents the new 1000% hyper bonus. Take part in. Place your accumulators with 1x bets and boost your winnings by up to 1000%. Hyper bonus, better than bonus. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, EACC, continues to spearhead the fight against corruption and unethical practices in Kenya in accordance with its constitutional mandate. On Saturday 9th December 2023, the Commission will lead Kenya's commemoration of the International African Anti-Corruption Day 2023, which is marked annually by all state parties to the United Nations Convention.